trying to learn to never say that I have I know things and know a lot of things. Now I know certain things that are certain things about the scriptures that I absolutely know about. <coughs> but there's so much in there that I do not know. The more I study, the more I read God's word, I find out the less I really know. And that's one of the things that we have to come to grips with as uh, people here on, as, in this time as now is to be uh, very mindful of the Holy Spirit, be led by the Holy Spirit to understand the scriptures of what God is trying to say to us. Because it's, uh, it's our book that we have. It's our letter that we have. It's our love letter that we have. It's our uh, book of uh, great things. You know, our poetry in, in the Bible. There's funny stories in the Bible. There's tragedy stories in the Bible. Because you have to understand that we got the Bible through blood, sweat, and killings. People were killed for the Word of God. John the Baptist, we had to talk about today, was beheaded because he stood up for what was right. And that's how we got our Bible. It's, it's, it just didn't come floating out there and say, here it is. No, it happened from real, live, living, hurting, struggling, blessed, all everything you want to name came through that. That's how we got it. And it's no different with this that we're talking about today and preaching about today about it. This is about believers must, uh, that we, we must do that. We really are some things, and this is the second part really of this, of this time. Uh, you know, we talked about the first of it in the first parts of uh, chapter 3, how that people was going, well, we've heard all the time that the Lord was coming. Why is the Lord, why is the Lord you know, why don't we come now? Why don't we come when the, You ever wonder why the wicked, it seems like they never get punished, you know, and it seems like us Christians, we suffer and we go, why don't why God don't do that? You know, why, why is God waiting on that? We're going to find that answer to that, and we're going to understand it by and by better. I'm not going to say that I'm going to give it to you that you can understand it clearly. That's going to be between you and God. I'm going to say this. I'm going to give it to you as I understand it and what it means to me and how it is and what the Bible is really saying. And that's where I get my understanding from. It's not that I'm smart enough to understand things. I have to get it from the Word of God. And one of the things that believers must do is to realize the long suffering of God is God's plan. He what he is he is being long suffering towards us because that's what he for, for a reason and that's for our salvation. That's what verse fifteen talks about. But we got it before that in verse nine. Listen what in Second uh, Peter chapter three verse nine says about salvation. Said his Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Why is why is Jesus tired not coming yet? He's still waiting. There's some people that he, he wants that he wants them to get saved. And he's tired for that. And he's trying to speak to the people. That's what I'm tolerant of. That's why I'm long suffering. That's why I'm putting up with all the way the world. The world is getting worse. I mean, it's terrible. The world is terrible. I mean, you think about here, just the United States. If you stand up for what's right, you're going to be persecuted. Jesus said that was going to happen to us. And you just might as well face it and go on and say, okay, that's what it is. And, uh, or you can take the other way around and kind of go with the world and not be done. But then you're going to have to answer to God. You have to choose who you're going to answer to. Either God or, or the world. Because guess what? On the end, you're going to answer to God. Regardless of what the world does. Regardless of what I do. When the smoke clears and the dust settles, God's going to be God. Amen. I mean, that's just what it's going to be. So, why is that? It's for our salvation. God's long suffering because we get it twice here. We get it in verse 9, we get it in verse 15 to help us to understand that. That the long suffering is for our salvation. God, you think that how God has put up with us. How many of you got saved the first time you ever was convicted and ever understood that you was lost and needed Jesus Christ? 
Anybody here get saved the very first time? The very first time that, you know, I don't know about you, but I did. I run from it. I run out of the church when they stood up for the invitation. And I thought, just as I am when I was growing up, had 42 verses. I mean, they sung it forever. When they all stood up, I stood, I, got, I was on this end of the church and it was right against the wall. The pews were pushed right against the wall. Our whole family would come in and we'd pick, every family would come in and pick a whole row, you know, and they'd sit there, all the family would sit in there. Oh, that's what they would do. We got over there and I, and I was on the end when, they, when everybody else stood up. I just got up on top of the pews, walked it out, jumped in the aisle, and went out the door. I didn't, you know, that's the first time I ever heard, really heard the gospel. I've been to church my whole life, growing up since I was a little boy, and baby going. But I didn't hear nothing. I didn't listen to the, uh, to the preaching. I didn't hear nothing about it. But one Sunday I did. And I run from it. But, for the, but it is a long suffering of God let me live long enough to get out. And guess what? When I got out of the church, God was still there dealing with me. I thought, I'll run home. I'll run home. I hid in the closet. I thought, if I can just get away from God, I won't be feeling like I needed to get saved again. Because I didn't want to. I was wrestling against it. And people who don't get saved, it's because they don't want to. Did you know people go to hell because they want to? They don't want God. And, it's, and that's sad. But Paul, well, see, we have the long suffering. God is still long suffering with them. Then he says about Paul writing. That Paul also wrote about this. So look, let's look at it. Paul confirmed this also. This is what believers must know that it's just not one person speaking this, it's just not one guy's idea. It's God's idea, and that we have two witnesses on it. In Romans chapter 2, verse 4 says, or despise how the riches of his goodness and the forbearance of his long suffering. It's talking about God. Not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. God's gracious love towards us, of putting up with us in spite of us. You think about that. In spite of us. He still loves us so much that he wants us to come and be saved. That's, that's what he would have, have us to do. It says in, in verse uh, 16 that they were unlearned and unstable and they wrestled against that scriptures about the second coming of Jesus Christ. They were fighting that in scriptures. They were fighting that the, that the, the Holy Spirit was leading uh, the apostles and, and Paul and them to write that Jesus is coming back again. And they were wrestling with that. Well, why don't he come now? It's, we've been hearing that since ever. That's coming. Adam and Eve were given the first prophecy of, of Jesus going to come. And it even talked about how his death in that, that his heels was going to be bruised. All right. And was lifted himself up on the cross to breathe with bruise his heels, even wear it down to the bone. His skin trying to trying to breathe. That's what that was talking about. They didn't understand that. Had no clue what that meant. But they believed on it. And all through the, the prophets said that it's going to come and everything in the Old Testament that it's going to come. Then we get to the New Testament, same thing that Jesus is going to come. Because you know why? They were there on the mountain when he said, when he lifted up, and, and these angels to, to, said, You men of Galilee, why stand here gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus that you see goeth away is coming back again. And he said, John, uh, Jesus said, I'm going to come back. I'm going to go part my place for you, then I'm going to come back and get you. So we have his word. We have a witness from heaven that's going to happen. But people wrestle against it. And not only that, just other scriptures too. Because you know what? It's a rebellion. Our flesh, a person who's not saved, will rebel against the word of God. Someone asked me one time, they said, are you, cons are you liberal, conservative, or fundamental? I said, yes. 
And they looked at me, wait a minute, I'm asking, are you liberal, are you conservative, are you fundamental? And I said, yes. They said, explain it. I'm liberal in all that I do for the Lord and giving and in working and doing. I give. I'm liberal to give. I'm conservative in believing that any person that puts their trust in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior can accomplish a lot of things. I'm fundamental in believing that the Bible is the Word of God, period, from beginning to end, and everything about it is true. And all that God said was going to happen in it is going to happen. They said, I don't understand. And I said, I know you don't. Because, see, we'll choose one of those three. We'll say, oh, I'm, I'm fundamental. But it won't be to say they're conservative because they think that means something bad. Today, if you mention being conservative in the world society, you're going to be blackballed if you're working or doing around people. Because you know what they think that means? Oh, you're going to stand up for all this thing about people. What that means is that we, we believe that we don't care what they live in. If they turn their life over to the Lord, God can change that in their life. Change them into being all that God wanted to be, all that's what they should have been, that God's plan was for them to be. See, we have lost our purpose of why we live. We are supposed to be under the rule and reign of God upon our life as people. And we have forgot that. It's, it's all about us now. If you don't believe me, just be around anybody. And you wait and see. They're going to bring something up. It's about them. Why, why they don't like something. There's a lot of things on it, uh, but I have to deal with it. It's because, you know what? It's bigger than me. It's bigger. It's not about me. It's, a, it's about the whole picture of it. So we have to understand how that works and how, how we turn over And we wrestle against the Scriptures. We wrestle against them. You know, here... There's a guy that said, well, how do you tell a conservative from a liberal talking about minor things now, make Christian things, theology things, okay? And I said, you ever notice that, that somebody will say, this is what the Bible says, and they'll say, but, but preacher, but this, but that's a goat. That's how you tell it. See, as a conservative fundamentally, if the Bible says it, I believe it. I just believe it. I'm not going to argue with it. I'm okay, that's right. But a liberal will say, but that's really not what that means. But preacher, but this. Goats do the but. Sheep do the following. That's how you tell. You, you can mark people about it, what they believe about the Word of God. If they don't believe in the Word of God, then... You know, and you know, it, it, now they've got, they kind of hide themselves now. They say, oh, we believe the Word of God. We just don't believe that's what it says. They're changing that now. Yeah, well, you, you, that's not going to work out in the end times or bound. But God's putting up with them because why? He's long-suffering. He, he, he is doing that. Then believers must, in verse 17, we get this verse. Listen, look what it says. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before, beware lest you also be led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your steadfastness. Believers must be careful who we watch and who we listen to and who we follow because the goal of Satan is to get you out of doing what God had you to do. That's, that's what he wants to do. And he'll do it in any kind of way that he can. Can on him. He'll get you with people that 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 are saying, "Well, you know, it's okay to do this, or it's okay not to do that, or you know, uh, you better be listening, and I better be listening to what God tells me to do, and not worry about what they're worried about." Amen. Because you, they'll get, you know what, people are doing things. I couldn't stand one time in a church, and he caused uproar. He caused a problem. It was a biblical stand I took on, and I said, you know, church, you're going to do that, but I'm not going to support that, and I'm not going to agree with that. And the, and the lady who brought it up took very, very personal offense of that and began to attack me. 
in all kinds of ways. And I just, you know, okay, 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 what's that? Finally, one day, she came to me, she said, Preacher, I owe you an apology. And I said, what is it? She said, you know, when you took that stand against something that I want to do, and how the church rallied around me, and I was wrong. And I want to get up today, and when she came early and talked to me, she said, Today, before you start preaching, I'd like to say something, if it's all right. I said, yeah. See, I, I grew up in giving, uh, this has been said to me, give you enough rope to hang yourself. Yeah. Because I had people say, you shouldn't have let her come up, but I wonder if she'd have said this. I said, listen, she can't hurt me. It might hurt me. She got up and she jumped on the church. She said, church, I was wrong, and y'all knew I was wrong, but y'all stood with me to the stand for what's right. Is this church going to stand for what's right or for what some person wants? You're going to have to make a decision. You know what I did after she got through? I said, let's have a, let's have a hymn of invitation. We had people ready to flood the altars. Asking God to forgive them for how they took a stand on something that was wrong. That was, I mean, wrong, wrong. It wasn't just a little wrong. It was wrong, wrong. And they came in and the altars and people come and apologize to me. And I said, listen, you owe you, your apology to God. If, you, if you've got that said with God, you're okay with me. Don't worry about it. Because that's what you have to do. Because people, if we're not careful... We'll follow the wicked because you know what? That's kind of what we want. To oh, we feel, oh, we feel uh, safe in doing that. And he's writing on this. You better be careful. He says, see that you know these things, that people are ignorant of the Scriptures. And they wrestle against them. They rebel against the Scriptures. And we, be, we as believers must understand there's people who absolutely rebel over the Scriptures. Preach in a church, and uh, they called me for their pastor. They wanted to call me for the pastor. I mean, they had musical instruments. It was, I you know, full and all kinds of things going on. And everything they called and asked me if I'd come, and and because uh, I preached revival there and, and um, before. And, and when they got, when we got through, I talked with all the staff. I said, I'd set up a meeting. I said, now, when I come here, if you ought to hear me to preach and to vote on me, uh, I want to meet with the staff first. That, so y'all have us a meal in the basement, that basement that I had a kitchen in. I said, y'all have us a meal for me and the staff. Because when I meet with them, I want to, I want to talk to them. I want to ask them questions. I want, I want them to get to know me. Ask me questions. I want to know them. So I asked them. They had the staff. They had a, a minister of music, a minister <coughs> of evangelism, uh, the minister for children, the minister for uh, older children, the minister for the teenagers, the minister for uh, young uh, adults, minister for college kids. They had all those guys that was there. That was, and they had under them, they had a bunch of folks that worked under them. And we're all in there and everything. So I go around and ask them. I said, do y'all all believe in the Bible? Yeah. Yeah, we all believe in the Bible. Do you believe in uh, the virgin birth of Jesus Christ? And the minister of evangelism began to get his handkerchief out. And tears began to roll down his eyes. And it kind of bothered me. And I said, are you all right, brother? And he said, Richard, we got people here that don't believe that. I said, where? And then on staff? He said, yeah. I said, how many of y'all don't believe in the virgin birth? I right, raise your hand. One guy raised his hand. He said, that's just impossible. And this guy's a minister in a Baptist church leading the music. Okay? It's, and it's not out of boonies. This is in a town. Okay? I mean, this is... It's, 
And I said, you mean you're never going to accept that? I said, okay. Anybody else got a problem with that? So I went down the line and all kinds of things. So that night after preaching that night, we had a little question and answer service. And the first question we said, preacher, this old man stood up and he said, preacher, I want to ask you a question. What would be the first thing you'd do if you came here as pastor? I said, fire that man right there. Oh, you can't fire him. He, he's wonderful. He's one of the best musicians in this country. I said, no, he is. Because he got up the, the day, this morning and played every instrument. He, 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 he had, instead of having the other people play the instrument, he showed me that he could play every instrument in the, that we had there in the thing. From the piano to the saxophone to the trumpet, everything. And I said, well, I, that's not what I've got a problem with. I said, he don't believe in the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. He has no business in this church as a, being paid by this congregation if he don't believe that. Guy stood up. But preach. Here come a goat. And let me tell you something, folks. As a preacher, I don't have goat feed. All I got is sheep feed from the Word of God. That's all I got. He said, But preacher, that's not important. Because it's just mentioned one time, you know, kind of thing. I said, No, it's mentioned more than that than that. It's mentioned in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Isaiah, all the way into Luke. He said, but you know, but they don't mention no more about it. Paul never talked about it, and it, it, it's not important. I said, yeah, it's important. I said, but first of all, because you, then you're saying that God's word's not true. Number one, because it said, prophecy said it was going to happen. Luke wrote it, you know. Matthew, maybe, you know. Okay. So you're saying that the Word of God is not true, right? That's what you're telling me? Well, it's not important. And I said, okay. I want to say something to this church, and this church better hear it, and you better listen. Now that this is brought up in the open, publicly, that this man does not believe in the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. And you're going to keep him here. You're going to come under judgment. This church will come under judgment. Well, that was it. That was the only question asked. Nobody said anything. And I said, well, are we ready to be dismissed? I turned it over to the chairman of the pastor's church committee. I said, dismiss us. Nobody said a word to me as I left. I got my vehicle. And I drove home. I watched that church over the years begin to fade. I watched a little hole get so big that it took the parsonage. They had to put a, ch a chain link fence up around the church for danger. I watched weeds grow up, its vines grow up up on the church. I watched it go from a, a church that was to, to nothing because they wouldn't they, they, they would not let him go because he was a great musician, a wonderful musician. Well, yeah, he was. No problem with that. But the problem of it is you can't claim to be a Christian and serve God and not believe in the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. It just doesn't work that way because why? You're denying God's word for number one. You're denying that Jesus is who He said He is. Number two, which was probably more important. And, and you're missing the whole point about why Jesus came. With not a human father, but God, God into that, to the Holy Spirit came to be to live a perfect life. If you had a human father, as soon as he even when he was born. He, he had been uh, in sin. Listen, I believe my children was, born, was in sin before they was born because they kicked me in the back while I'm trying to sleep at night. They were mean to me while I was, when I, before they ever come out of their mama. And I said, you're, that's what, it, see, if you don't believe in the birth of Jesus Christ, just think what you're denying. 
And you have to be aware of that. Before you're led astray. You know. And then look on what believers must do. This is the end of it, okay? John <coughs> glad that this is the end. But believers, we, we must grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We kind of had that in that Sunday school day, didn't we? That we just have to do. We have to grow in it. We, you got to take on the personage of Jesus Christ. you got to start following Him. Why you come to Sunday school and church and, and, and involved in reading your Bible and going and doing that, it, the number one reason ought to be to be more like Jesus. That ought to be your number one reason. Then when you're more like Jesus, you'll understand His mission and understand that you're just an extension of the mission that Jesus Christ came to do. To heal and to save and to do all those things that He, was, that he said He was going to happen. said He was going to do. The brokenhearted, the captives, people who are captives, to set them free from Satan. The people who are blind, that they be able to see the light. That's our, we, we were, and it'll come to us that we're doing that. That's if we take on that knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever. See, then, then you'll understand what He is seeking. How you live your life tells everybody. How I live my life tells everybody that sin and work. What you believe about Jesus. If Jesus is, is king of your life or not. How you live. I think that was kind of an interesting Sunday school thing too, wasn't it? Joe does that every Sunday. He preaches my message to me. Make sure I get it right. And he don't even know. But that's what that, that's what it is. When you take on the personage of Jesus Christ, you're following Jesus Christ, then he can have there can be glory both now and forever. You can give glory to what to who Jesus is. If we're not, then we're not giving him glory. And one of these days, he's going to take it. He's going to come. Let me tell you something. Everybody, every knee, every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. With every hope back on your right shoulder for just a moment. Father, again, we just pause and thank you for this day. And what a wonderful time it is to be with you brothers and sisters in the Lord. Father, I just pray that we just learn to take on the person of Jesus Christ. More and more. I'm praying for myself in that. That I'd be more like Jesus. I've not arrived there yet, but I'm seeking that and looking to that and learning to do that. Even to learn the scriptures, I'm learning every day. And I just pray that for someone that's good today that's never received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, this might be the day they come and say, I want to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Maybe there's a Christian here that's wrestling with something that might be hindering them from being all that you'd have them to be. Caught in something that just really it's kind of took over their life. I, we have to turn it over to you. Because you said you would lead us out of that. You'd take us out of that captivity that we're in. So many times you've done that for me, and I thank you. I'm going to still need that and look to that. And while I thank you for your great salvation that you provided through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We pray in the name of Jesus and for his sake, amen and amen.